Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing the reflections video for my most recent book release, The Anti-Relationship Year. So, hi, if you're new here, my name is Katie. My fourth book, The Anti-Relationship Year, just came out last week on March 30th. Today's video, we're just gonna talk about how that went. I have found every book release to be drastically different, so it's interesting to compare them. I also learn something new with every release. I try different things, so, and this book was uniquely challenging for a couple of different reasons so we have plenty to talk about i also asked you guys on instagram to send in any questions that you had or anything in particular you wanted me to talk about so we'll go through some of those as well before we get into the rest of the video let me tell you a little bit about today's sponsor thank you so much to skillshare for sponsoring today's video now if you've been around for a while i've been using skillshare myself for years now and i think they're a really great resource if you're interested in the same things that i am if you're maybe looking to self-publish in the future i have some good class recommendations for you if you're unfamiliar with skillshare they're an online learning community with classes in a really wide variety of different subjects. Obviously, I am partial to the writing classes, but then they also have a whole little subgroup of publishing classes. If you're interested in self-publishing, if you're familiar with Jenna Moresi on YouTube, she actually has three different classes on Skillshare right now, which are specific to self-publishing. I took her Release Your Book the Right Way class, and I would definitely recommend that. And if you're completely new to self-publishing, her class on how to self-publish your book is great for beginners and all the basic things that you need to know. They have classes on everything from writing and editing your book to how to format it once you're ready to publish. So this could definitely be a great resource for you if you're looking into self-publishing for yourself. I'm gonna have a link down below in my description that you can use to get a free trial if you want to try them out. They're super affordable even after the free trial. It's less than $10 per month with an annual membership and I've gotten so much value out of taking their classes and I would highly recommend. Make sure to check them out down below in the description if you're interested and let's just get Back into the rest of the video. So first things first, the good news is everything went according to plan. Everything went up on time, even the audiobook. So the anti-relationship year is now out in ebook, paperback, and audiobook. All of them were available on release day as I was hoping would happen, but I wasn't sure. <laughs> Just briefly, because I've gotten questions about this on like where you can get the book. The audiobook you can only get on Audible, Amazon, or iTunes. The ebook you can get on pretty much all platforms, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, Apple, other places. I would just look at wherever you get your ebooks. It's pretty much everywhere, Google Books. And then paperbacks you can get from Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. And I know I have a lot of international readers who've been trying to get their hands on a print copy. So I'm currently looking into trying to get the book onto Book Depository. It's not there currently and they have like a really long processing time. It can take like up to eight weeks, but I am looking into that because I've had a lot of people reach out interested in that. So I hear you, I'm working on it, I promise. So yeah, going into this release, I honestly, didn't know what to expect because every book release so far has been different for a lot of different reasons. In this particular case, I had no idea what to expect because it's a companion book. So if you're unfamiliar with me and my books, this is a college new adult friends to lovers romance and it's a companion to my book The Anti-Virginity Pack. So they kind of make a little series together but it's not the kind of series that you have to read in order and you don't have to read both books if you don't want to. So the first book follows one character and this book follows our main character Joe, who's introduced in book one, but you don't have to have read book one to read book two. You could read book two first, go back to book one, like it wouldn't matter. And although I've tried to make that as clear as humanly possible in all of the marketing and in every single video that I've made in the last six months, I've said that, I still have people like leaving comments being like, I haven't read the book first book yet, so I can't read this one or stuff like that. Like they just still don't get that it's not a series like that. So one of the biggest challenges with this release has been marketing it clearly and effectively. and. It says it in the description of the book on Amazon, on Goodreads, like everywhere I've tried to say this is a standalone, you can read it without reading the first book. And despite all of my efforts to make that as clear as possible, there are still people who are confused. So that has been the first challenge with this book. My second challenge has been, surprisingly, this is not a young adult book. Like I, I've never said this was a young adult book. I've never called it young adult. It says it in the description of the book everywhere that it's new adult, that it's a college age book, that it's more adult than young adult. And I still have people shelving it as young adult on Goodreads, voting for it on young adult lists on Goodreads, calling it young adult. And that's been another challenge is being very clear, this is not young adult. And that just hasn't come across clearly for some people too. So that's been another challenge that I wasn't really anticipating. This is like an industry thing though. I don't think this is just for this release. A lot of women authors find this to be an issue that people just kind of brush off their books and assume they're young adult because they're female writers. So I think 
that might be part of it but then also to be fair the first book is young adult so i could see where there would be confusion so yeah i would say my biggest challenges with this book has been marketing and marketing exactly what it is and i chose to brand them together like make the covers match and everything and to actually put them in a series so i've gone back and forth on whether or not that was the right choice but considering this follows characters from the first book it just seemed like the most natural move but yeah my biggest challenges have been marketing it as clearly as possible <laughs> and so then going into release i didn't really know what to expect sales wise because on the one hand i had to think about you know sell through as far as series go you know how many people who read book one go on to read the next book in a series so i had that to keep into consideration and then some people who haven't read book one again might not understand that they could read book two without reading book one or someone who read book one and maybe didn't love it might not want to try this book even though it's completely different and it follows different characters so basically i had no idea what to expect going into this release were the same amount of people going to buy this as the amount of people who bought the first book were more people going to buy it less people like i had no idea what to expect and it's only been a week it's a thursday the day that i'm filming this so it's a week and two days the book came out on tuesday of last week so i've been tracking book sales as much as i can um draft to digital sales have like a really slow turnaround time basically you don't really learn the data from those sites until about a month later is when they finally have all of that for you so that's like apple books you can read the books on scribd and those count some international sites like an australian site things like that i won't really have data on until next month but from the data i've been able to actually keep track of in real time the book has been selling as well as i could have hoped for um this book had fewer pre-orders than book one so i was kind of going off of that originally thinking okay so clearly fewer people are going to buy the second book not like that many less i think we got 75 or something fewer pre-orders for this one than the first one so it wasn't like drastic but a noticeable little drop however once the book came out um i think a lot of people just don't like to pre-order so i've seen consistent sales since then particularly for the paperback um i've been getting more paperback sales than ebook sales which is unusual for me i usually sell about two-thirds ebooks one-third paperbacks so i'm assuming that's gonna die down once the newness of the release wears off i think people who buy the paperbacks are probably you guys who are viewers of my channel and like me and my books i think the everyday reader who stumbles across the book will probably more likely get the ebook it's what i'm assuming and i also had audiobooks come out for the first time with this release so that was a completely new thing to experience and i had no idea how many people were going to pick up the audiobook that, but that's been really popular as well and then i also did a 99 cent release or i did a 99 cent sale for book one for the week before release to try and you know breathe some more life into the series right before release so i definitely think that factored into you know how many sales i had around release day but if we are to compare just the um release month i've seen more sales this go around in total between all of my different books than i did with the anti-virginity pact which i think makes sense now that i have four books out instead of when i released book one i only had two so there's more books for people to go to so that's what we would hope to see and thankfully we did see this time around so that's the numbers of it at least now let's just talk kind of about my experience with the book release this is my third book release in quarantine <laughs> three of my books have come out while we've been in lockdown so it's been interesting i guess i felt like this book release was a lot quieter for lack of a better word um i have a release day vlog up of release day i had a really good day that day i had like a little celebration for myself i tried to make it special so i don't even necessarily mean the day of release was quieter i just felt like this whole i was so much more calm going into this release i guess i knew more what to expect because this was my fourth book now i've gone through this four times but also i just didn't really make as much i don't know fanfare with this release i only had a handful of arc readers i think about 40 copies of the book went out half of which were just um gifted copies to my patreon people i think i had like 20 people on patreon sign up for the book and then i sent out like 20 copies to reviewers i did try some new marketing tactics with this book and um if you're interested in like the actual business side of self-publishing i have a tier on my patreon page called self-publishing 101 so one of the videos we're gonna do this month is going over like the exact numbers and how effective each marketing tactic was and whatnot so it was an interesting experience with this release just because i tried a lot of new things so it felt different this go around because only a handful of people had read the book before the book came out 
Whereas with the anti-virginity pact, I put that one on NetGalley and I think I had like hundreds of people read the book before it even released. So by the time release rolled around, it wasn't that big of a deal to me because it kind of felt like the book had already been out. This time around, I only sent out a certain number of arcs. So it felt pretty new when the book did release because it did kind of feel like people were reading it for the first time because not as many people had read it yet. Okay. So I'm gonna get into some of the questions that you guys sent in over on Instagram. How do you feel now that this storyline is more or less closed? I feel sad with this book, more so than I've ever felt with any book release, um, especially because I reread the book. I listened to the audiobook like right before the book came out. Now I like still can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> um, I'm sad. This is my favorite of my books that are out so far. And the characters are my favorites of my published books so far. And reading this it just i want to write another book about joe and miller <laughs> i miss writing about joe and miller i didn't really have that feeling when the anti-virginity pact came out i still love meredith and sam but their story felt very much complete after the book and once the book was out i was done with it i think part of that might be because the anti-virginity pact was a much longer process i first wrote the book when i was 17 revised it when I was like 18 then I went off to college and I didn't touch it for like four years and then I found it again my senior year of college rewrote it and the rest history the anti-relationship year I wrote in July had it revised and edited more or less in about two months and then I was done with it by December so instead of like a drawn out five year period of time that I spent with the book like I did with book one I only spent like six months with this book before it came out into the world so maybe that's why I'm not quite ready to let it go. I don't know, something just feels kind of unresolved about it. I'm not gonna write another book in this series. I've gone back and forth on that a lot and I've had requests to do that. A lot of people have been like, the most popular requests are people want a book about Harper, Meredith's younger sister in book one. And then I think the natural extension off of this book would be, would be to write a book about Gracie, who's a character who's introduced in this book. But honestly, the series is called The Pact, which if you've read the first book, it's the pact that these two best friends sign. And, you know, the first book opens with a scene of just the two of them. And that's really what the story is about. It's about the two of them. So it feels pretty right to end the series with just the two books and one for each girl, despite there being other characters who I feel like would make interesting books. So I don't have any plans to write any, another full length novel for this series. But that doesn't mean I don't want to. I don't know. Maybe in the future I would write like an extended epilogue, some kind of novella, short story or something. Maybe we could just release it as an ebook. Maybe we could just do a freebie and send it out in my newsletter. I don't really know. But I have a feeling that somewhere down the line I will probably write something else with Joe and Miller. Even if it's just for me, but I don't plan on writing another book. But this is the first time I've had a book come out and I've been like, man, I want to do that again. Like I want to write that book again. I want to write more. Hi, I pop in a couple times later in the video because I just realized there were things I forgot to say. Just kind of related because I was talking about writing more about these characters. I forgot completely. There is actually a bit of a cameo from a character in this book and the romantic suspense that I wrote in January just because I thought it was kind of fun. Like most people I think who read that book once that eventually comes out won't even notice because there's just I don't know unless there's like a lot of crossover in those readers and they're different genres so I'm not expecting that if you like this book you should read that one when it comes out just to see that happen because I think it's kind of funny right now I'm working on books that are in a totally different genre I'm working on an urban fantasy paranormal romance series and so rereading this and now that this is out I really enjoyed writing like a new adult romance I really really enjoyed that genre so I would love to write another book like this in the future even if it's not following these characters just something of a similar vibe I really want to go back to this at some point point. and I got two pretty similar questions what was different about this release and the release of the anti-virginity pact and then how did this release compare to the anti-virginity pact how did it differ like I said it felt a lot quieter um honestly I was a little bit nervous going into this book release. Um, if you were around for book one's release back in June, it ended up being a pretty negative experience for me, actually. Um, it ended up being really a difficult time for me, actually. And there was a lot of negativity surrounding that release. So, which I tried really hard not to let that ruin the release for me, but it definitely colored that experience. And now whenever I look at that book or I look back at that, that's what I think about. So um, having this book come out, especially because they're connected. I kind of, 
was bracing myself, I guess, even though I didn't really think I was gonna get the kind of negativity that I did with this book that I did with the first one. It was almost like PTSD, like I was nervous about this book release, like I was bracing myself because I didn't want to go through all of that again. So um, this book release has been overwhelmingly positive, thank god. Not just li like in the terms of like positive reviews for the book or anything, it's just interactions that I've had with people online, the general vibe surrounding this release was positive, so I'm really really grateful for that. I feel like this will be a book release that I will be able to look back on and feel happy instead of anxiety. <laughs> so this one was a much more pleasant experience for me, thankfully, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. Did the book have to be so good I had to finish it instead of sleeping? <laughs> I'm so happy that the majority of people seem to be really enjoying the book. That's both in like the author side of it, like of course you want people to like your books, but this book in particular brought me so much joy writing it and I love it so much and I love these characters so much. And like I was saying before, how I didn't have that many people read the book before release, I didn't have that many ARC readers, I didn't really know how people were gonna react to it, so seeing so many positive reviews come in and seeing people like genuinely get connected to the book and get invested in it beyond just like reading it and forgetting about it, I'm so happy to see that just because I love this book so much and I'm just happy people are getting out of it kind of the same thing that I got out of it and are having a similar experience that I did so that's been really really cool to see. What did you do differently from previous releases and what will you do different next time? Um, like I was saying, I tried some different marketing stuff. I did not put the book on NetGalley. I handled all of the arcs myself. I tried some different marketing things. I had blog tours going on. I worked with bloggers a lot this time. As for what I'll do differently next time around, who knows? Honestly, I feel like I've been giving myself more time than I need for each book release to prevent, you know, not meeting deadlines and not getting stressed out. But now that I've had two book releases in a row, like I said, like the books are ready so far in advance before the release date and I've just been giving myself that extra time. So I'm thinking with releases in the future now that I've gotten more used to the whole routine and I kind of know what to expect and how long things are gonna take, I could probably shorten that timeline a little bit. Like this book was completely done in December and then it came out practically in April. So a lot of that time I felt like I was just like waiting around, like the book is ready, I wanna release it earlier than the date that I've set. So I feel like I could probably condense my publishing timeline a little bit in the future. I'm definitely gonna play around with the marketing things that I do each time until I find what I think works best for me and I think something, I think different things work well for different books. A lot of people every time I release a book have asked about signed books because I sell those on my website so what I'm thinking maybe next time what I'll do is um because there's such it's a weird process I have to order author copies from Amazon to get shipped to me to then sign to then send to other people so it's a long wait time like I don't get the books and I ordered author copies of this book on release day and I still don't have them and I probably won't have them for another week or two. Author copies just take a lot longer than if you were to just buy the book on the site. So I'm thinking maybe what I would do to kind of get around this next time with the next book if people were interested in signed copies is I would do like a sign up form and I would have you order the book and just have a notice there being like, hey, it's gonna take like at least a month to get to you, just be aware of that. But that way I could know exactly how many people want signed books and then I could order the exact amount of stock that I need and then people wouldn't miss out because I usually just buy a small amount of books and then once they're sold out they're sold out so this way I could like actually see exactly how many people want them and I could order exact the exact amount so that's kind of an idea that I'm toying with then maybe we could do like a live signing or something on here where I'm just signing the books on a live and we can chat and stuff so it'll be a little more of that kind of like in-person event feel that's an idea but yeah I'm this video is already getting longer than I was originally intending but I'm trying to think if there's anything else to say with this release overall it's been a really positive experience I am super happy with this book and I'm really happy for it to be out I'm really excited to have an audiobook version this time around that's been really cool the first book got a lot of mixed <laughs> reactions and mixed reviews. This one seems to be a little less mixed, which has been interesting. And a question people always ask when books come out are like, um, you know, how do you know when it's done? And how do you know when to stop changing things? And do you ever, you know, wish you could go back and change things in the book after they've released? And that's definitely the case. I think you could spend your whole life tinkering around with the book and at some point you just have to decide that it's done and put it out there. So for this book, I'm glad that, at least as of right now, there's not really anything that I would change about the book. Everything that's in it is exactly the way that I wanted it to be. And seeing like early reviews of the book, I guess maybe we could chat more about it when we do the live show. I'm going to be doing a live show at the end of this month with like a spoilery discussion on the book for everyone who's read it already. So if you want to come around for that live show, make sure you read the book first because I don't want to spoil you. But seeing people's reviews, um, 
there's just like one or two things that I didn't want to be too obvious about in the book and I didn't want to like spell it out so I kind of like hinted at things in it and a lot of people don't seem to be picking up on it so I kind of wish I'd been a little more explicit and just a little more blunt about a couple of things but other than that it is a shorter book so I think a lot of people just wish it were longer and I wish it were longer too but I didn't know what else it needed <laughs> I like I didn't want to put filler just for the sake of there being filler so maybe years from now I will realize oh, I should have added that but as of now I'm very happy with the book the only thing I went back and forth on before the book came out on whether or not I wanted an extended epilogue because there's already kind of an epilogue at the end and I toyed with the idea of writing another epilogue at the end like flashing forward more and like really showing kind of where the characters end up like far after the end of the book and ultimately I decided not to do that and now I'm still kind of wishing I did which is why I'm saying maybe I will write something like that and just send it out in my newsletter or something of that nature. Hi. Sorry if the whole angle has changed. I am editing this video and I realized there was something I wanted to talk about that we didn't talk about. This is what I get for not taking notes. Especially because I mentioned in a previous video that we would talk about this, then we didn't talk about it. Let's talk about pre-orders. Not necessarily like the number of pre-orders that I got, but if I want to do pre-orders in the future, and this is something I've been going back and forth on. So here's the thing, pre-orders, when you have wide distribution, if you do a pre-order everywhere else, those pre-orders can't hurt you. So if you pre-order on Google or Apple Books or Barnes & Noble or anything like that, those pre-orders are helpful. Not that all pre-orders are good, but when it comes to Amazon, the way that they structure their pre-orders is just annoying in regards to your ranking on their site and how it affects your release day. If you pre-order a book on Amazon, say a month before the book releases, that book's rank gets a boost on that day that you pre-ordered it. If you pre-order a book on Google, the rank doesn't move while the book is in pre-order. All of those pre-orders count on release day. So if you have a longer pre-order for Amazon, on release day, those hundreds or however many pre-orders you got before the book came out, the rank has already moved around as they came in. So on release day, they're not counting basically. So the longer your pre-order, usually the worse your ranking is going to be on Amazon on release day because Amazon also factors in like how long the book has been up on the site and the average number of sales it gets every single day so if you got like a ton of pre-orders on a couple of days then you had a lot of days where you didn't get any pre-orders it kind of like averages that out so then even when you sell a ton of copies on release week your ranking still will stay low because it's averaging in all of those pre-order days that you weren't getting a lot of sales if that makes sense so basically pros and cons of pre-orders pros are you know you're potentially making more sales making more money you're making sure no one forgets about your book you're giving people an opportunity to order it for a long period of time so it just kind of depends on what your priorities are with a book release are you trying to get as many sales as possible as many readers as possible or are you trying to improve your ranking that's particularly important if you're trying to hit a list but then also the higher a book is ranked on amazon the more they push it to people who are on the site the more they show it to people the more visible it is to people who are just browsing through books so you might get more sales that way so there's just a lot of different things to consider so i talked about this in my release day vlog how i purposefully didn't pay attention to ranking on amazon on release day because i knew it would be kind of it just like wouldn't be anything impressive because I had a longer pre-order at least a couple of months and so I knew no matter how many sales I got during release week my rank was gonna suffer because of that long pre-order period. So something that I'm thinking about toying with in the future is not having that long pre-order on Amazon. Maybe I would set up the pre-order on all of the other sites so people could pre-order there whenever but then if you wanted to get it on Amazon I wouldn't start that pre-order until like a week before release or something you know or maybe not do a pre-order at all so that's just something to think about for the future i just wanted to include this clip in here really quick because i said that we would talk about it and then i forgot <laughs> i think that's gonna be it for today's video overall i'm really really pleased with how this book release went i learned a lot as i do with every book release i think a lot of this is trial and error but overall i don't really think i would have done anything differently I stand by all of my choices this go around. As of now, it's been out for about a week. We already have 68 reviews on Goodreads and 21 reviews on Amazon. So for just the first week of the book being out, I'm super, super happy with that. I'm so impressed with how quickly 
a lot of people have read this book so many people like got the book at Bindi and had it finished on release day or finished it within the first week of release week which is just absolutely insane honestly just very flattering and very touching that people were that excited about the book so that was really cool that people just read it so fast and I already have so many people who finished it so thank you so much if you're watching this if you've read the book especially if you've left a review it helps so much and I just really really appreciate you taking the time to do that so yeah I think that's gonna be it for today's reflection video it'll be interesting to look back on this and once I have many more book releases and hopefully I know a lot more <laughs> yeah I'll have links down below in the description for everything if you want to check it out but other than that I will just see you guys in another video very very soon bye no. Pretty